Hey there, my name is Mike and in this Lens Studio tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Material Editor. This tutorial contains basic information that provides beginner level understanding about how shaders work, how to create a graph material, and finally, how to add, remove, and connect nodes to make your first shader. A shader is a small program that runs on the GPU. They're called shaders because they're used to control how objects look and how they're affected by light. All materials in Lens Studio are composed of shaders. I know it all sounds complicated and learning a new programming language is hard, but don't worry. With the material editor you can create shaders visually using nodes without writing any code. In a fraction of the time you can make fun and beautiful materials for your lenses. With that being said, let's get started. First open Lens Studio and create a new project. Let's start with creating a sphere so we can see how our shader appears on the model. To create a sphere, click on the Add New button and search for Sphere. The sphere comes with the default material provided by Lens Studio. Let's change it to our own custom material. As we said earlier, a material is composed of shaders. To create our own custom material in the Resources panel, click on Add New and search for Graph. Now you will see that there are a few options to choose from. These are a few example presets which can give you insight into how different materials can work. For now, let's select Graph Empty and apply it to our sphere. Now that we have our material signed on the sphere, let's customize our material and create some cool effects. To start editing our custom material, select it in the Resources panel, and then in the Inspector panel, click the Material Editor button. Alternatively, you can simply double-click on the material. Then you should see the Material Editor panel pop up. Just like other panels in Lens Studio, you can dock the Material Editor panel anywhere you want. To navigate in the Material Editor, you can right-click and drag, or middle mouse button and drag to pan the view. You can use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out. By default, when you open a new graph empty, you will see the master node called the shader node. Materials are defined by what you connect to the shader node. Nodes that connect to three vertex inputs, World Position, World Normal, and World Tangent, are written into the vertex shader. The vertex shader handles all the processing of individual vertices on our sphere. Nodes that connect to the color input are written into the pixel shader. The pixel shader handles the color and transparency of each individual pixel on our sphere. To help you remember which shader does what, imagine a flag waving in the wind. All the movement and deformations on the flag are handled using the vertex shader, while things like color and shininess are handled by the pixel shader. Together, the vertex and pixel shaders make up the flag material. In this tutorial, we will focus on the pixel shader. You can always leave the vertex inputs empty and the mesh will pass through its vertices positions and normals as they came in on your model. Now let's change the color of our sphere. When you select a node, you will see some options appearing on the right side of the Material Editor panel. If you don't see the options, click on the tiny dots on the right side of the panel, then drag it to the left to expand it. Now you can see that there is a color option available. Click on the color field and let's choose a color. But you might notice that if you select a material, you won't see a color option in the Inspector panel the way you would on other materials you're used to. The reason is, if you want to expose anything from the Material Editor to the Inspector panel, you'll need to use a parameter node. So let's go ahead and create our very first node. To create a node in the Material Editor window, we can either right-click and select Add Node, or simply use the keyboard shortcut tab. This will bring us a list of nodes that are available in the Material Editor. So, the node we want to create here is Color Parameter. Since there are so many nodes available, I recommend searching for the node by typing color and then clicking the color parameter node when it becomes available. Now you can see we have a new node added to the screen. You can drag the node and place it anywhere in the graph. Notice that the output type on the color parameter is RGBA. That means it's meant to output a color value. So let's connect the output value by clicking and dragging on the output port 
and connecting it to the color input in our master shader node. When it gets connected, you will see right away that our color value is exposed in the inspector, and we can change the color value through there. Now I'm going to change the parameter name from custom color to albedo to make sure our project is clean and easy to understand. To do that, select the node and change the title to albedo. Now let's create a shader which blends two different textures together. First, we will need to remove the connection between our color parameter from the master shader node. To do that, you can hold shift to switch to scissor mode. In this mode, if you click and drag, you will draw a line that removes any connections between nodes. Since we don't need the color parameters anymore, we can go ahead and delete the node by selecting it and pressing delete on the keyboard. Now let's create a texture 2D parameter since we want to blend two textures together. Hit the tab key on the keyboard and then search for texture 2D parameter and select it. Connect the output to the shader node's color input and now you will see that you can assign a texture in the inspector panel. I'm going to rename this node title to texture A for now and import my own textures by dragging and dropping them from my computer into the resources panel. Next, I'll assign one of my textures to our custom material by dragging and dropping into the Texture A input field. Now we need to have an input field for our second texture. To do that, let's duplicate the Texture 2D parameter node by selecting it and pressing Command C, then Command V on Mac or Control C and Control V on Windows. Let's change the title of the second texture input to Texture B. But at this point, you can see there is only one color input available, and if I connect texture B, it will automatically remove the connection from texture A. The color input on the master shader node can only have one input. In order to connect two textures and blend them together, we can use a helpful node called Mix. Let's add the node. Again, I'm going to press Tab and search for the Mix node. If you want to insert a node between two nodes that are already connected, you can hold shift and drag the node and place it on the connection line. This will automatically put the node in between the others. You can also hold shift and drag a connected node to remove it from the connection. Now I'm going to add the second texture to the mixer inputs. You can see texture B input is now exposed in the inspector and I can assign my second texture by dragging and dropping. Cool! Both textures are now blending together. Now you can see each of our textures is 50% visible. To change this, we need to change the ratio value in the Mix node. Let's add a Float Parameter node. Then rename the title to Ratio, and then connect that to the Ratio input. You can see now that I'm only seeing texture A. The reason is because the float value from the node we just added is zero. If I change it to one, I'll only see texture B. I can put any number between zero to one to set the ratio in between our two textures. Now if you put a value higher than one, or lower than zero, it's going to break the look of our shader. To fix this, we need to limit the min and max on our float parameter. Let's select the float parameter node and turn on enable min to make sure it's set to zero. Then also turn on enable max and make sure it's set to one. After adding the min and max, you can now see that we have an awesome slider in our inspector panel. Now we've created our own first material which blends two textures together. From here on out, it's just playing around with different nodes and having fun. For more information on the material editor, Make sure to visit our guides on the Lens Studio website. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe for more tutorials. Have fun.